Brent, I think that was so exciting what you had, so don't mind us. And I'm sure you all absolutely love to watch Cheetah dashing around. I know I'm envious. So just before we headed off to the Cheetah, we were talking about how the fences aren't quite the fences they are today. And Herbert was saying that sometimes lions and leopards used to sneak through. And he's actually got a story to tell you about one of his first encounters of when he was a little boy. Um, I remember this other day where um, a pride of lions, they broke out the fence to the communities and killed about, I think it was 17 uh, cattle. 17 cows? Of which one of them was uh, from my uh, house. And we had to track them through, the only track that I was following was the one that was from my house because I knew exactly how does the tracks look like. And eventually we came to to two big male lions feeding on one of the cows and that's where they gave us a, a growl. We stopped and one of my friends turned back and ran. <laughs> and I had to stop and we shouted at these male lions, the charging lions, and eventually they stopped. And we had to reverse and went back to the um, community to report to the elders who then called in the reserve managers uh, who quickly responded to the situation and they had to take back the pride and that's where my trekking um, started. That's fantastic. I think that's really amazing as well. And that the, the, the great relationship that the elders of the community had with the parks board or, or when this, before this was the Sabi Sands and there were just animals and things roaming around to whoever they need to, needed to contact. And, and that's something that we see is we often see human and animal conflict in sort of the more remote areas. I know we used to see it a lot up in the Lower Zambezi National Park, the elephants encroaching, encroaching on the farmlands and eating all the crops in the drier seasons. And you can't really blame them so I really think that that was truly an amazing story firstly that that's one of the first encounters Herbie had with of course two big male lions and the devastation they can bring to a community by taking out a whole lot of cattle and then of course the way in which the elders responded instead of being angry and cross and we must kill these lions because they killed our crops all they did was they're not supposed to be here anymore and they just called of course the parks board and they came in and handled that situation amazingly. Whether they darted them or chased them back across into the reserve, I'm not sure, but I just that's just an amazing story. I actually get goosebumps when we all have relationships and good connections with people instead of trying to harm the beautiful uh, animals and wildlife that, that we have around here. But now, of course, things have changed a little. We have put a big electrified fence off, and that's to give the, uh, the people living outside and in the communities an opportunity to not worry about looking over their shoulder every second second of the way and making sure of course that their cattle are always nice and safe but Herbert those fences don't stop the leopards do they? No not at all. Have you ever seen the leopards uh, trying to catch the goats and sheep in the communities or does no, it not happen too often? No it, it doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen well that's good that's good to know so in some way they are sort of trying to keep the animals in this property as well as trying to keep the both the people outside safe and of course protect the wildlife in here but now we're going to start our tracking process so the first thing we need to do is we need to find a road right have you got something here Herbert? Yes. Okay what are we going to follow this morning? And now we're tracking there's, there will be few signs that will be leading you to find these animals and the only way to tell or to be convinced that you're gonna find the animals is through edging the tracks and this is one of the signs these are zebra tracks and from the tracks you will be able to tell how fresh the tracks are and for me these are all tracks the zebra walked past here just after the rain just before the rain as you can see there's grass on top and the, with the grass, which is dry, it also helps you to tell that the tracks are not that fresh and therefore we'll be looking for very fresh tracks which will be convinced that trying to follow the animal, the chances are there that we can find the animal. So was this piece of grass put on top of the track maybe from the zebra biting down, eating something and then not all the grass perhaps going inside of its mouth and dropping back on its track? Is that what's possible? Okay, or maybe it even just kicked it out. But that's incredible. I, so it's something that you would completely overlook and like Herbert 
it said, these are old tracks. So we're going to head to the road just down the way and hopefully we're going to pick up on some fresh ones. Should we head on over over there? Yes. So Herbert, we have a request from James and James would like to know this morning, can we find a track but specifically left by a bird? Do you think we can do that? Yes, we can. I think the road would probably be a yeah. good option. So we see all the different animals often crossing over the road and at night time we get birds like night jars and a couple of other types of things crawling, well not crawling, heading onto the road because we always see those big beetles and millipedes and all sorts of other creepy crawlies crossing around there, even the odd scorpion. So let's go and have a look and see what the newspaper has for us this morning. Right. Now, this is gonna really taste me. I don't know when I last looked at bird tracks. The only one I can identify is, of course, a dove's track from the crazy way that they walk. But let's, let's have a little search here. Obviously, Herbert's got the good eyes, though. He's the expert, and I feel very confident that he's with us this morning, so he can help make sure that we give the right answer, of course, to the track. Now, normally you see lots of bird tracks all over the road. It seems as though for now, they haven't quite walked just here. We'll get them though, we'll get them eventually. It's such a beautiful morning and <clears throat> well, we always do insects and flowers and things and we know that they're not going to race away. So I thought that, that we'd try something a little bit different this morning and I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying having chats to Herbie and hearing about him as he grow, he's grown up in this area. And uh, well, it's great for me too because I get to learn about one of the most amazing mentors. He probably doesn't realize how incredible he really is and how much value I gain from him. So I'm enjoying it. And then of course, well, tracking is so much fun as well. I haven't been able to do this, not only just identifying the tracks and you see us tracking in vehicles a lot, but to be able to walk and trail an animal is some skill. Remember, they don't always walk on these roads. So when they cross off, maybe they just go like this and off they go. Then you've got to find other things. The ground might be too hard, can't pick up any tracks. You've got to look for small signs. Which way is the grass bending? Maybe they'd walked in the morning, there was a bit of dew, and you can actually see which way an animal has gone. Look for signs of a buffalo has been wallowing in the mud. They'll often leave bits of mud on grass and passing vegetation as they go past. That's something you can look. But we're gonna have another search for the bird tracks. It seems as though they've avoided this stretch of road, but don't disappear for too long. We're gonna send you across to Evia, who's got a couple of beautiful in 